Hi students, welcome back. This is plus one computer science and computer application chapter 3 part 2 video. Before getting into the video, please do subscribe. In the previous class you have learned few topics and now you are going to learn memory devices that is random access memory, read only memory and secondary storage devices and also about ports and interfaces. Let's start with memory device. A memory is just like a human brain. It is used to store data and instructions. The two types of accessing methods that is to read or write, we have two different types of accessing method. One is sequential access and the other one is random access. In sequential access, the memory is accessed in an orderly manner from starting to end. But in random access, any byte of memory can be accessed directly without navigating through previous bytes. Now look at this picture. Here we do have 8 memory boxes and filling all the boxes one after the other in an order is actually called as sequential access. But random access, wherever we find empty boxes, we can fill that box. It is not required to follow any order. This is what random access. And here, different memory devices are arranged according to the capacity, speed and cost. So, in this memory hierarchy, smaller capacity, faster access time and higher cost memory devices, cache memory. Larger capacity, slower access time and lower cost is hard disk. So, this is the overall concept. Okay, now let us discuss about random access memory, that is RAM. Look at this. Actually, this is RAM memory. So, random access memory is also called as main memory. And this is available in computer in the form of integrated circuit. That is, it will be attached to the circuit. And RAM is a volatile memory which means that the information stored in it is not permanent. If you turn off the system, data stored in RAM memory will be erased. And next you are going to learn types of RAM. Yes, we do have different types of RAMs. They are dynamic RAM and static RAM. That is DRAM and SRAM. Dynamic RAM being a common type needs to be refreshed frequently. And static RAM needs to be refreshed less often which makes it faster. So obviously, Static RAM will be more expensive than dynamic RAM. Actually, dynamic RAM is used in main memory and static RAM is used in cache memory. That is the reason dynamic RAM works lower than static RAM. And here, static RAM requires less refreshment. Dynamic RAM requires frequent refreshment to maintain the data. And then we do have read-only memory. This type of memories are called as special memory and it comes with pre-recorded data. During the manufacture itself, programs will be recorded that cannot be modified. What type of program will be recorded? That is critical programs. It stores critical programs that is used for booting the computer. When you turn on the computer, the first process is booting process. So that critical program is actually stored in ROM memory. And this is a non-volatile memory. Even if you turn off the memory, the data stored in ROM memory will not be erased. So read-only memory, here we cannot delete the data stored in this memory. Now let us see the types of ROM memory. We do have PROM, EPROM and EEPROM. Let's see in detail. So PROM is manufactured as a blank memory. Whereas a ROM is programmed during manufacture process itself. So if it is a blank memory, that is if it has free space, then we can record the program. So PROM programmer or a PROM burner is used to write data on the PROM chip. That is this blank memory. And the process of writing data to a PROM is actually called as burning the PROM. Now look at the PROM chip. This chip is used only once. Once if you burn this PROM chip, the data stored in this chip cannot be deleted. So this is programmable read-only memory. And the next one is 
erasable programmable read only memory that is eprom here erasable that is you can delete the data which is burnt so that option is available let us see how it is done it eprom is a special type of memory which serves as a prom but the content can be erased using ultraviolet rays that is uv rays and this eprom is manufactured as a blank memory and you can program it and if it is exposed to ultraviolet light the content present in that memory will be erased so that you can reuse that particular memory that is eprom chip so this is erasable programmable read only memory and most of this ep chip have a transparent area at the top surface which is covered with the sticker if it gets removed the ultraviolet light in the sunlight may erase the content so to prevent the data the sticker will be placed over the chip and the next type of rom is electrically erasable programmable read only memory that is double e p rom it is a special type of p rom that can be erased by exposing it to an electrical charge so nowadays most of the chip memory chip is a type of e p rom so like other memory this ep rom also retains the content even when the power is turned off so it is a type of permanent storage device and it is lower in performance so now look at double ep rom chip so this chip is manufactured as a blank memory space and you can program it you can delete it so this process can be done for multiple times and the next type of memory is cache memory this is the fastest memory in computer the reason is it is very close to cpu so the data transfer is very fast compared to main memory cache memory is very high speed memory and that is the reason it is very expensive since it is very expensive it comes in smaller size when we compare with main memory cache memory is small in size and it also helps to achieve fast response time so response time means it is nothing but access time that is how quickly the memory can respond to read or write request so for each request the time taken to respond is actually called as response time okay now let's move on to secondary storage devices in this first you are going to learn about hard disk hard disk is a magnetic disk on which you can store data now look at the hard disk it takes stack arrangement that is the disk will be placed one over the other and each disk has a pair of heads and this pair of heads is used to access the disk so this is the working of hard disk and this hard disk comes with a single or double sided disk and this is the image of hard disk outer side of hard disk next you are going to learn about compact disk a cd or cd rom is made up of 1.2 mm thick polycarbonate plastic material and thin layer of aluminium or gold is applied on the surface and that is used to store the data so cd data is represented as tiny indentation known as bits the area between bits are known as land and the capacity maximum capacity of ordinary cd rom is 700 mb i hope you all know what is cd so this is the picture of cd so this is how cd player looks we have to place the cd inside this player and the motor within the cd player rotates the disk just to read the data and digital versatile disk that is dvd it is similar to cd disk so let us see what is dvd it is an optical disk capable of storing up to 4.7 gb of data more than 6 times what a cd can hold and most of the dvds are used to store movies at a better quality and double layered sides are usually gold colored and single layered sides are usually silver colored it looks like a cd and this two are the different types of dvd and look at the image of dvd and next you are going to learn about flash memory devices flash memory is an electronic solid state non volatile computer storage medium that can be electrically erased and reprogrammed so non volatile means permanent storage device 
and this devices can be either double e p rom or e p rom double e p rom means electrically erasable programmable read only memory or erasable programmable read only memory and this flash memory offers fast access time access time means time taken to read or write a character in memory is called as access time and the capacity of flash memory varies from 1 gigabyte to 2 terabytes now look at the image of flash memory in simple it is called as pen drive so this flash memory can be used in personal computers or personal digital assistants or digital audio player digital camera or even in mobile phones so now we are going to learn about blu-ray disc so blu-ray disc is a high density optical disc similar to dvd this type of disc are mainly used for playstation games and for playing high definition movies and double layer blu-ray disc can store up to 50 gigabytes of data and blu-ray uses blue violet laser to write hence it is called as blu-ray disc so now look at the image of blu-ray disc the capacity of this disc is 50 gigabytes okay now let's discuss about ports and interfaces so this is the back part of the cpu and here we do have all the ports and these ports are used to connect all the peripheral devices and look at this here we do have the main power supply a cable will be given for power supply likewise we do have different ports for different purpose see this is parallel port this is found in old computer same way here we do have serial port this is also found in old computer okay now the first port is serial port so this serial port is used to connect external devices found in old computer you can just look look at this we do have serial port actually this cpu is a old version cpu we do have serial port here and then we do have parallel port it is used to connect printers which is found in old computer see the last one 15th point can you see a long um, port this is actually used to connect printers and this is also found in old computer nowadays we do have usb cable printer so this cable this port is not available in new computers and then usb port it is used to connect external devices like camera scanner mobile phones external hard disk and printers to the computer so usb means universal serial bus so i hope you know the cable i'll show you the picture of usb port so this is usb port and this is usb cable most of the mobile chargers we do have this uh, usb port and the cable will be provided with usb cable and then we do have vga connector vga means video graphics array this is used to connect monitor or any display device like lcd projectors so this is vga connector and then we do have audio plugs this is used to connect sound speaker microphone and headset so you can see this circle like radio button it looks all this and then we do have ps bar 2 ports this is used to connect mouse and keyboard to pc it is here ps means personal system and then we do have scsi that is small computer system interface port this is used to connect hard disk drives and network connectors the last one is high definition multimedia interface hdmi this is an audio video interface and this port is used to transfer uncompressed video and audio data so for more clarity we use this type of port and cable it is used in computer monitor lcd projector and digital tv if it is smart tv you can find this uh, hdmi interface so that's it we have completed chapter 3 please read the text and learn the question answers that's all for today thank you